Hello, hello, Zimbabwe, and welcome to Zimbabwe Daily. Today is a Friday. I hope I find all of you well and you're keeping in good groove. Today, we just want to take a look at uh, what's been happening on the scene. All right, there we go. So it started on a weekend, on a Sunday. Oh, this has been uh, what's been happening right here on Zimbabwe Daily. This was our headline um, because we woke up to hearing that inbox had to be stopped. Why? Because they had a number of challenges with their system. They had been asked to write to RBZ and make a follow-up on the issues and they had it. So we, we set out this uh, cartoon of the day where we are looking at uh, RBZ and Mukoro playing a joker on inbox. So the mobile money transfer system, we yet to know where exactly it is. But what we do know is that if you still have your money in the inbox account, go and redeem uh, that money either for cash or for purchasing whatever you would want to order from uh, the Simbisa brand's um, uh, platforms. So looking at some of the stories that were in that paper, Chamisa refuses Mnangagwa bribe, Zifa goes against FIFA, fires Kamombe, Kamambo from board. We see that uh, Zimbabwe was then suspended. And, um, and the reason why they suspended Zimbabwe is because of government interference in football issues. So we also are still to see the action that government will take for the restoration of our football. For now, it remains in limbo. Zim women still marginalized in leadership 42 years after independence. These uh, remain uh, issues that are affecting our society. Women remain on the very periphery. The question is, why are women not participating in processes of development? And uh, those questions can actually be answered when we look at the toxic environment under which um, we live. But all the same, we encourage women out there to go out there and uh, participate in issues to do with leadership. Price of basic commodities surge in Zimbabwe was another story that we carried uh, on that weekend. And I think um, the Zimstat actually issued out that uh, a statement that in an average Zimbabwean family needs about 69000 60, $69, dollars for them to have at least a basic and normal life so that's what we have been carrying uh, on our our front page zimbabwe's president warns banks could be stripped of licenses another warning that uh, continues to come on our landscape right and on the monday this is the cartoon that we carried in zimbabwe it's either you are brainwashed by zanu pf or by Papa churches. And I know a lot of people will say, what are you really saying? But I think our environment can clearly uh, show us exactly how people are you know, being treated either by the government or into churches. As long as I'm the one who is leading you, I will tell you what you need to do. And that's just it. So the issue of uh, Zimbabweans either being brainwashed and we saw a lot of you coming through uh, with your comments on our Facebook page, which is one thing that we really appreciate you coming through and talking to us about some of the products that we are putting through. Uh, at the end of the day, we can only make um, Zimbabwe better when we all participate in this issue. So, uh, yes, that was the picture on our on our Zimbabwe daily uh cover page of april 25 22 22 uh in that uh, edition we carried the story we should all be zanu pf said broadcasters at bc this was said by the president emerson Nangagwa. i'm not exactly sure if there is any joy in all of us being of the same uh, political persuasion I think diversity does bring the beauty out of our country. So that uh, story was carried in. CCC celebrates High Court judge dismissal. This is the High Court judge uh, from Lawayo who was dismissed, and uh, the Triple C was celebrating that because of uh, different reasons. Zanu politics destroys uh, Zim football story that uh, 
continued into the next day looking at what exactly uh, it costs Zimbabwe for us to lose our membership of FIFA. And that includes funding, hey? So quite a big issue that we need to deal with as a nation so that we can restore our status among the uh, soccer-loving nations. ZANU-PF labels Chamisa Zim's first ever dictator for not going to Congress. Interestingly, um, ZANU-PF and uh, its surrogates and all the people who are sympathetic to it, they are pushing for Triple C to do their Congress. Whatever reasons, only they know. But the Triple C is hell-bent on following their own plans and own vision for 2023 they say let's focus on the election the congress will always come others are saying at the congress that's when we'll know who is who but i'm sure as triple c spokesperson always say the people know their leaders so uh, we continue to watch the landscape and see what the triple c will do um we saw media hype uh, happening over uh the few weeks that have just passed then uh kenyatta cancels Zimbabwe trip. There was a bereavement in his country. One of the founding presidents uh, died, so he couldn't come for the ZITF. And Zimbabwe's president warns banks could be stripped of licenses. A story that we carried again on this day to talk about the issues affecting uh, the banking sector, issues to do with forex exchange, and, and all that. So we continue again to watch uh, the landscape. On April 26th, Kwaka Muka Kune Nyoa and Azidari Zahari Shamwan. People were talking about um, their issues, their problems, and really pushing Kutai Wasadzai to not so well. Let us drown our problems in our beer and our cartoon. Promise everything, deliver nothing, ask for five more years to make more promises. I think this is just a depiction of what's happening on our landscape where people are saying the government has really done nothing, but it promises just before elections, elections take, pl take place. And then we come back again to more promises. And that is a, 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 a real big issue. If you make promises, fulfill the promises, ask again for the mandate. And the promises that you've made, that you've fulfilled, are the ones that will make us to uh, give you the mandate to lead. So the question is, what is the position that people are going to take come 2023? But hey, <laughs> all right. So in that edition, we carried um, we carried sorry ZANPF to showcase achievements under Second Republic. So ZANPF as a standard is ZITF, and they are obviously marketing their government or their comrades in government and whatever it is that they call the achievements, we are yet to see. Chamisa salutes Macron election victory. So we saw that election happening in uh, France and the 44-year-old um, stopping to victory and Chamisa sent his uh, congratulations as well as our president who calls Macron his dear friend. Namibia Zim clash in women's cricket final. This was a story that we carried and um, the games have ended, but uh, yeah, we saw Zim women clashing with the Namibian uh, cricket team. Zim's literacy rate lower than Libya, Swaziland, and Nigerian blogger. Yeah, so people were talking about Zimbabwe's literacy rate and uh, saying no, it's 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 much lower. It's not as high as we hype it up to be. Uh, Galileo starts lithium explanation work at 2N in, pro 2N in project in Zimbabwe. So we're expecting two projects uh, around lithium mining. Yeah, so Kuva Air to launch in Zimbabwe as world's first blockchain-powered airline. We saw that story being covered in our paper. Then we move on to the centers. What is your gender? What shoe size do you weigh? How many teeth do you have? Do you live with albinism? These are the questions uh, on our <laughs> cartoon. And I saw that some people felt that we were mocking the exercise that's happening in the nation. No, not at all. We're not mocking. We are not against um, what's happening. It has to be done. A census has to be done. And we understand that there are a lot of... Uh, 
research elements that are also should and need to take place in order for the nation to be well informed of the things that need to be done in Zimbabwe. So no, we're not mocking the exercise, but we're just saying uh, some of the questions that have been asked are rather interesting. And uh, as people, as the census people are coming, let's let us accommodate them. Let us have the patience to just respond to their questions because it's part of the bigger uh, research uh, efforts that are taking place besides just counting the numbers because it's pointless for them to just count and not know exactly how people um, how people are going through you know, their daily living. So that we understand the economic uh, uh, standing. And the Zim Daily, your stance on a noble program like census is worrisome. So, but we're also saying have a little bit of humor. When we bring you the cartoons, we also want you to look at the other side of things. And we also want to bring a smile on your face. We also want to be, you know, to spike a conversation around issues and, and, and things that will be happening in our country. So uh, thank you so much for your feedback around our cartoons. We really, really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so that was the that was the cover page for April 27th. We move on to April 28th. We continue with the Dilari Zari uh, concept, but uh, this case we're saying why can't these G40 apostates just form their own political party instead of appointing themselves Chamisa's advisory committee? I think, like I said earlier on, we saw a lot of people coming through, um, you know, former ZANU-PF people, you know, just people on GA pushing for the Triple C to have uh, their, um, to have a Congress, to have a Congress. For what reason? They say we... People need to know who their leaders are as they go for an election. The question is, don't people know who their leader is? Well, it begs, um, you know, for an answer. But yeah, that was the story. That was the cartoon that we carried on that particular edition. What is your own take? What is your own view on that? We saw you coming through with a lot of um, contributions as well. And... Um, you know, such we, you know, people feeling that uh, there's no reason for us to want to go ahead of Triple C. They know their processes. And um, somebody says, problem is Chamis and others want to this guy's money. So they feel like he owes them that much. We don't know whether Triple C actually got money from some of these people. Uh, but yeah they seem they seem to be an interest that was um, generated over the last week about the triple saving it's the same kind of hype that we saw and uh, we're not sure how triple c will respond to this we saw them responding um last year when there was an argument and debate over the name of the party and whether they were going to go for an election in a, in a new name and what we then saw uh just on the 24th of Janu January 2022 was Nelson Chamisa announcing that they have formed a new party, a new baby, a new outfit, and that was the Citizens' Coalition for Change. So it is still to be seen if they are going to capture the words of these people who are talking about a Congress. You know, you can never uh, know what people are saying. People know their, their president. People know... Um, who their leaders are, others are also saying, Gawaiite Congress, Ikoko. Gawaiite Congress, Ikoko. Barakuta ora wacho, Gawaiite Congress, Yavo. For Triple C, they know what they're doing. But the question is, um, what are they going to do? And um, the majority of the people feel that they're taking a, a stance like that and it's okay. But for some others, continue to push. The question is, for what purposes? So that was the cartoon uh that we had on april 28th and then um april 29th that's today war against citizens we saw the statement that was issued by the by the 
Arare spokesperson, police spokesperson, that they started a blitz with a number of um, stakeholders, including the city council, including, you know, the local boards around Arare, like um, Ruwa, Chitungwiza, Epuet, all those coming together for a blitz. The question is, why now? We're just a few days from schools opening and suddenly there's a problem with um, some vehicles that ferry people. Zopko is not enough. I don't know about you, where you are coming from. I don't know the issues that you are facing as you travel from point A to point B. But in Chitungwiza, as we have seen, there are so many uh, uh, people are walking actually to try and cross over the portion where the police are stationed so that they could try and get transport from just after the bridge, um, you know, just after where the police uh, roadblock is mounted. It's not a good sight. People are running, trying to get into open trucks that would have passed the police. Um, the the Zupo buses on their own be inadequate and and it's just a terrible terrible season for people who use public transport. Um, we also see them attack um, vendors, you know, and private private uh, shika shikas or those shika shikas that we call them that uh, street kids even those that are uh, trying to control traffic they're being taken off the streets so. Uh, the question is, why all of a sudden are we having such a blitz? Uh, you know, people are right now running around trying to make sure that uh, schools open their children, uh, they are sorted, and now we have this blitz that comes up. On. Somebody was saying probably the police are also trying to raise uh, funds for their children's uh, school fees because, as you know, schools are opening on Tuesdays, and uh, with the money that they get, they probably are putting up this blitz so that they can fleece, um, you know, the people, uh, you know, the poorest. They, they can fleece somebody of money so that they also are able to, you know, have an upkeep. Because uh, such operations, they are not devoid of ka, ka something in your pocket. Nungo bat koto ta officer, officer mungu zozo koto iti kandineka five, you know. So it's 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 quite sad. Um, and the team jinjiri epwe tma venda saka day wambo wambo mani kwa one kuti zano ndi kushandi sava no chete ya pedza newe yoku siya. So everything that then happens is always politicized in Zimbabwe because the back you know, f stops with whoever is in leadership. So people feel like as long as you give heed to the government, then you've got a problem because... So this is the perception that they give to people. Once when government is going to vote in town, somebody coming through, seeing all this, and also saying people should go and register to vote. But after they register to vote, they must go and actually vote. But the advice is, and them no vote Shakuma Mishafeni. That's what uh, people. Monzi ti votere asizanuka. This is a sentiment coming in from uh, some of you who follow us on the page. Um, yeah, unfortunately, this operation seems to just in fear, instill fear, according to Fungai. And this operation is meant to instill fear in township urbanites as we drift towards 2023 elections. Like I've said, everything tends to be politicized because everything that we are going through as a nation, you know, it moves and stops at politics. So we need to do something. So who are you not against? So who are you not against with disabled people? Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, to Itai and the one who draws the Zim Daily cartoons is a genius. Yeah, the person is a genius and is able to capture some of the issues that are happening. So we, we are truly thankful uh, for that. It's sad that this is happening. It's sad that um, we are in this space. Yes, we would want streets that don't have uh, vend vendors. 
would want to have streets that don't have mshika shikas, would want to have streets that are clean, streets that don't have street kids. But it's all going to rise and fall upon the fundamentals. Have we corrected the state of things in our country? If industry is working, I don't think anyone would want to be a vendor. If um, the economy was working right, I don't think people would really want to be on the pavement selling whatever they can. I think people would want to, you know, have dignity and work for their families and provide without an issue. Um, issue to do with Mshika Shika. If Zupko is able to come up with a robust system of um, an efficient, a reliable transport system, we will not have a problem in our country. And um, if all things being equal, no sane Zimbabwean would want to be running against the authorities each and every week, week in, week out. That is not possible. So these are some of the issues of concern that we try to highlight here at Zimbabwe Daily to then say, how do we make our country, how do we make our nation better? And you, as you tune in, as you watch um, the programs, as you comment on our cartoons, as you engage with us, it gives us the strength and the motivation to continue uh, going on. So this has been a week in review. Um, we've also seen the government, we've seen the public media vilifying uh, Hope Ho Chingono this week. Suddenly, all of a sudden, they're interested in his uh, in his guts. So, <laughs> so. Yeah, it's really sad. We may laugh, but it's really sad that um, we continue to have a serious disregard of uh, property rights, people's private property rights. Instead of fixing our nation, we are focusing on things that are just destructive. What has Hopo Chingono done? Is it because he is a vocal in terms of what we need to do as a nation for us to be in a different place? Uh, space is it because he's talking and asking for accountability from those who are in positions of power that begs the question that begs an answer and uh yeah so we'll see what our cartoonist is able to cook for us uh this week as we go into uh the month of may so we conclude our month of april looking at the war against citizens. Definitely things that we need to work on as a nation. We need to start to rebuild the social contract. We need to start um, rebuilding our country. And one of the best ways we can do that is if all of us become part of the processes that are necessary to do that. What are these issues? We're talking of registering to vote. If you haven't registered, you need to take it seriously. Somebody go and register to vote. There is a blitz that's going to end tomorrow, hey? So you need to make sure that whilst they are still in your area, you go and register to vote. But even if they are no longer in your area, the ZEC offices are open at every district office. Go there, register yourself, get yourself registered, get yourself at the voters roll, begin to participate in issues of national importance. Because if you're not participating and yet you're expecting uh, certain changes, then you're doing yourself and those who are actually voting a huge disservice. A lot of people don't go to vote, but a lot of us are always watching the TV, the news for the results. Results from what? If you don't take part, don't even invest an interest in the results. And if you don't take part, don't be questioning those that are taking part, okay? So let us all make time to go and register to vote. We have got some time before the next election. So here's the trick. Once the pronouncement of an election date is done, voter registration it can continue, but those who are in the voters' role when the pronouncement is made are the ones that can vote. So let's get our facts right so that we are not running around at the last minute and saying, I want to vote for the election once the date 
has been pronounced okay um right uh so yes voter registration is taking place and um do go and and register to vote at your nearest registration center if you don't have a national id like me the civic registry is in the areas okay so let us go and get ourselves um registered let's go and get ourselves uh national ids because when you vote you can't take your driver's license it doesn't work there you can however take your your passport you can take your um your national id and you can get yourself registered and you can actually vote but if you have a driver's license guys don't do that i observed the elections in the uh, just ended by elections a lot of people were being turned away because they brought the wrong identification the identification that works at registration centers is a national id and a valid passport uh welcome on all right your... yes yes thanks uh thanks yvonne i don't know if you can hear me uh, and yes, thanks I for um, i'm quite passionate uh, actually about the registration the voter registration that you've just been talking about here just to give people a bit of uh, uh, info on what it actually entails in terms of um, getting registered i know there's a blitz that's ending tomorrow uh, yes. for those that are still yet to register what does it involve what do you need to have in order for you to be registered you need a birth certificate an id what are the things do you need Okay, for voter registration, you need a national identity document um, and you also need your proof of residence. So if you have, if you are staying somewhere at your house, it is not yours, you must still know your address, your street number, your the district where you are coming from. So if you go to a registration center and you don't have a proof of, of uh, residence that carries your name, uh, they'll give you an affidavit at the registration center, which you fill in to say, my name is Yvonne Muchaka. I reside at 3126 Unit C, and they will know which uh, polling station to allot you. Remember, we adopted a polling station based a polling station based uh, registration processes when we started the bvr exercise so the moment they input your house address your location and your name the system itself will pick up a polling station for you so uh, what does that mean i registered in chitungwiza and i vote at polling station in, at fungisai primary school but at fungisai primary school there are different polling stations so there's polling a b c d up to e so what then happens is your name is a uh, place because they use um the algorithms where uh like your your surname it starts with a or your surname starts with m so you have to find your name within a specific polling station so it is important that one carries their national identity document they carry their proof of residence if they don't have a proof of residence they must know their address and when they go to the uh, voter registration centers all right so right now we are still on a blitz and the blitz ends tomorrow the 30th of uh, april 2022 but registration at centers will still continue because Zach has got offices at every district to support. All so right. So what's what's the difference between the the blitz and 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 what you've just been referring to here? The, you could still register after the blitz, right? But you yes, register after the blitz. Yes, the blitz is just bringing the registrants closer to you. So uh, Zach has like moved themselves from their stationary offices and come into your location so All that's right. what blitz is doing they're just bringing themselves closer to you so mm -hmm. that you don't have to you know walk longer distances to come so this is why people should take advantage of a blitz because it's closer to home they've got many um many mobile registration spaces so that also reduces the amount of time one is to stand in a queue to get attended. 
All right. So what does it do? We have any stats from Zach whether the blitz has actually uh, the what they intended it to achieve? Do we have any any details on that? Um, right now, we don't have uh, collated uh, results as yet in terms of how many people have actually uh, registered to vote. But if you would walk into um, any district office, they are able to say uh, these are the people that we have registered uh, like uh, today or, or stuff like that. So the the system is able to tell to tell um, how many people have registered on that day. But for the national uh, bleeds to then say how many people have actually registered, that information is not yet uh, online to then tell us how many people have actually uh, registered to vote in the period of the bleeds. So All right. Uh, uh, but it, your own assessment, have you seen any general increase in uptake in terms of um, your own assessment of the blitz, perhaps in the areas that you reside? Have you seen a more interest in people registering? Or? Personally, not exactly. I think people have uh, turned out to go and register to vote. But the interest is remains very, very low. The uptake is really, really low. So much more needs to be done. And I think um, there's more like voter education that actually needs to take place. Why are people supposed to register to vote? In Zimbabwe, remember, it's not mandatory that one actually um, votes. So because of that, people choose not to participate in these issues. And that is a serious uh, that is a serious problem. Right. So people generally are interested in knowing the outcomes of an election without necessarily being a part and parcel of the process, which is a very worrying trend. Yes, and it's especially given the the amount of um, you know the you know when you look at the stories like the one that we're showing on the screen in in terms of the the illustration mm. of the general uh, outlook in terms of how the police deal with the populace in Zimbabwe. No one seems to, because this this cycle of, of, of continuous repression, and mm -hmm. um, we can only break it by, like you've rightfully said, people need to be part of the process if they want yeah. to see change and um, war against citizens for those that are joining us. We're just trying to see what we can do here at Zimbabwe to encourage more people to be part of this political process. You cannot want the results of an election if you're not taking part in the processes. Yvonne has yeah. just said I that. You, you realize that? I realized it during the by-election because I went around um, Harare observing what was going on. And I remember when we got to Epworth, and we were just asking some young people who were doing their vending and we we're asking where the center was because i think we had been lost at that particular time so we were asking if we're still on track in terms of where we were going and they did uh, direct us and i was asking did you vote and they said yeah yeah yeah, we voted and i was like show me your indelible ink and they said ah you know so people feel like they want to be part of the things but they don't execute uh, the you know in the processes they're not part and parcel of the processes that are taking place and yet they've got an interest to know the outcome and when you know when one wins over the other you know people start complaining if there was rigging there was what but you did not participate hmm. so how do you claim rigging when you did not participate you were not part of the processes right Those who participated did what they did you did not participate and you expect a different outcome. How does that work? So those are some of the things that we need to educate our populace to say, if you don't participate, if you are not in it, don't expect mm -hmm. anything else other than whatever comes. Yes, and, and it, it might actually be true that maybe some of the accusations that are leveled against ZANU-PF may not necessarily be true. It's just that people... <laughs> Are not taking part in the process of voting as you are rightfully saying um and uh, it's it's said that uh, we year in and year out we talk about some of these issues that you're seeing on the screens where the powers that be 
uh, showing uh, are not uh, really uh, treating the citizens very well. As you can see on your screens there, you've got the police. Just a few days ago, we understand that the police launched a new crackdown against uh, vendors' private uh, combis and street kids. And these are things that have been happening for many, many years. And we, by highlighting these issues, we hope that maybe some of you might find it in your good hearts to take matters um, into your own hands legally by uh, involving or engaging in the political process of registering to vote. But we are seeing the interest is not as much as we were hoping. Uh, I don't know whether it's uh, like these same ideas that you were uh, just sharing here. You've won that many people feel that uh, maybe they are, if they take part, they don't see things changing. So they've just resigned themselves to the fact that it is what it is and they just have to sit back and watch. Yeah, but you, you see what it does. If 10 people who are supposed to participate in a process or mentally pull out of something because they are not getting what they expect. If two people then take an action and still the result is not as expected, then the age cannot then blame the two that actually did something to right. say you didn't do enough. Mm -hmm. We still all need to come in and push as much as we can. We all need to come in and do as much as we can so that we are able to build our country. We are able to develop it. The whole psychology of development in this country has is such that people have resigned to fate. You know, people are expecting some superpower somewhere to come through and save them, which is why you then see. Um, I think the 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 cartoon that we had at the beginning of this week, people are seemingly brainwashed by those who have got authority to do something. So if it's us from the church, we try by all means to even manipulate the way people think when it comes to issues uh, of making decisions. Even a seed in church, it's, it, it has to be sold in such an attractive way that it feels like you have, to, you have to do it. It's an obligation. You have to. But at the same time, the realities that are around you will tell you otherwise. Yes, so, it's... Um, it's, it's really it, sad. It's sad, especially when it comes to Zimbabwe. It's it's not something that we... Uh, at, I, I was watching Julius Malema just a few days ago trying to encourage Zimbabweans actually in South Africa to say, if you guys want change, you have to go back home and vote. And Julius Malema is one of the most uh, accommodating voices um, in, in, in South Africa. He generally as a soft spot for, for, for immigrants. But you are hearing him now starting to say Zimbabweans need to go back home and vote because he understands that we cannot maintain the status quo. We can't continue uh, crying and, and, and blaming everyone else and yet uh, not doing anything about it. So Zimbabwe, there we are. You are just uh, seeing an illustration of... Uh, some of the issues that we're facing in Zimbabwe, there has been a new crackdown on us ordinary citizens. Uh, the police are at it again. And we have seen um, a rampant disregard of, of the law in terms of the ones that are affected are mostly the, the, the vulnerable, the powerless, those that are not even causing any damage. You see the vendor there, if you actually look at the... Um, image on your screen there you see a lady there with a child on her back and also the police um just trying to stop her from looking after her. her contribution to the economy is probably insignificant but you she's someone who's just trying to make a living there from what she's doing and then you have also the police chasing the those that are providing transport i uh, understand from the pictures that we we're seeing yesterday Transport is now a big issue in Zimbabwe, and yet those that are trying to make the issues that we are seeing in terms of transport, they are being uh, stopped from doing that by the police. And the last part of the image, you have a street kid there that is also being it's being dragged by the police, and um, and uh, there's uh, actually he's holding onto some glue there because he cannot afford to 
pay for himself or to buy drugs, not that we're encouraging them, but he is taking matters into his own hands there and he is sniffing some glue and the police are dragging him. And this is the issues that we're trying to uh, come together to put our heads together as Zimbabweans to see how we can come to some sort of a solution. So thank you very much, Zimbabwe and, and Yvonne. Thank you for... Just before we yes. end, uh, Mona, I think, yeah. uh, like I said, the timing of this blitz also is really worrisome because we are going towards the opening of schools. And normally what people do is they save for a for an occasion or for an event. So now people are in the dying minutes trying to put together the winter uniforms, trying to make sure that the school fees are sorted. And that's how you end up seeing that there are a lot of people at this particular time more people are in the CBD because they are trying to, you know, do the last minute rush as uh, schools are opening on Tuesday and the blitz starts. So you realize that uh, it, it, it's really sad. And it's oh, you mean the, the crackdown, the right? The school term, yes. It's opening on Tuesday here mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And the crackdown, you, you don't mean the blitz, but the crackdown, the police crackdown. Yeah. That, well, that's what they call them. They, you know, they always come up with these blitz right. that take place at specific periods of time. After mm -hmm. a week or two, it dies down. And then they come back again after like three or so months. You know, there is no stability. People are always uh, on edge. It's as if they are walking on eggshells. At one point, the temperature is okay. The next point is boiling and you don't know. The next time you turn around, it's freezing. So there's just not that predictability in terms of uh, how things operate. And because the fundamentals are not in place, Mona, uh, people will always find their way back onto the street because if they don't sell whatever it is that they have, they are not going to eat in their homes. As long as they don't do business, they are not going to, you know, to be able to keep their families running. Yes, right. you, you see people are annoyed by some of the questions that the census people are asking because it, it sounds you know irrelevant, but it's really important that as they do the accounting of the people, they also establish just exactly how Zimbabweans are making their end meets on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, people are, those who are employed and earning like uh, $500 a month, they are much better. Some are working like our civil servants and they are earning about $300. And it is very, very difficult to actually survive on that because prices, whether in US dollar or in RTGs, they are going up on a daily basis. You look at the fuel price, for example, they may say our economy is stable, but if it was stable, we wouldn't see price increases every week. Bread has gone up, millimeter has gone up, a, but salaries has not gone up and when workers raise these points they are considered the enemies and we look at the may day that's coming up this week it's going to be explosive mona i look forward to hearing what uh, leaders in the civic society will be saying because this is a very critical uh, time we have been saying we are at a crossroad for a long time are we still at that crossroad and what changes are we expecting so i think generally as we wrap up this conversation uh this coming week is also going to be very explosive we also have uh, the press freedom day coming up on the 3rd of may and the question that we continue to raise is how free is the media in zimbabwe we have different bills that are being introduced and we ask the questions are these supposed to enhance our freedoms or they are there to stifle the freedoms that people have. So those are some of the issues to look forward to in the coming week, Mona. Thank All you so right. much. All right. Thanks, Zimbabwe. And uh, it's, it, it, is, uh, it is what it is. They, we are, as a nation, we have to come back to our senses, especially on the issue that we have just been discussing on ensuring that you're registered to vote. This is the little that you can legally do uh, to bring change in Zimbabwe. Any other efforts that someone or anyone may suggest to you uh, will not work. The only way we can bring the change that we so much need in Zimbabwe is through participating in the electoral process. And we have an election next year. We don't want to leave it to the last minute. We still have uh, about a year and a bit uh, before we have the next general election. What we are encouraging you to do, if you're in the diaspora, there is 
stuff that you can do you can you have family back in zimbabwe you have leverage over that family make sure that you at least encourage them to go and and, and register get the evidence that they are registered if they need money and resources to go and register do your part it doesn't make sense like yvonne was just saying most of us are interested in the result of the election you find that everyone is all over the internet trying to find out who has won but you we don't seem to have the same vigor and energy to participate in the actual process of getting the results so we just want to urge you zimbabweans wherever you are yeah wherever you're listening to us from make sure you adopt you adopt at least uh three people we have some campaign that uh cooksman was talking about the other day that uh, adopt a voter make sure you have someone that you know back home in zimbabwe make sure you adopt them and ensure that they are registered to vote that's us here on zimbabwe daily on a friday friday the 29th of april 2021 it's coming up to exactly four minutes after 1 p.m until then have a nice weekend Bye for now. Thank you.